Uh, so yes, uh, hi doctor, uh, we can start the session now. Uh, so let's get into the important topic of LASIK for the young and fearless. I'm delighted to welcome you all for our webinar on LASIK, a transformative procedure that has revolutionized the field of ophthalmology. Today we have the privilege of being guided by an esteemed expert, Dr. Alpesh Narotram Toprani. He's a distinguished specialist renowned for his expertise in keratoconus, advanced cataract lens implant, and FACO surgery. His journey of dedication and excellence in ophthalmology spans across various domains, including laser vision correction, LASIK, robotic cataract surgery, multifocal lens implant, and toric premium lens implants. Educationally, he has pursued a refractive surgery fellowship at Laser Vision Center FACO Emulsification and Anterior Segment in Madurai. He is an alumnus of JNMC Belgium, where he has completed his MBBS and he pursued ophthalmology at Mysore Medical College. With a wealth of experience under his belt, Dr. Alpesh has conducted over 70,000 plus laser vision correction surgeries and has performed advanced cataract lens implant surgeries. His commitment to advancing the field of ophthalmology extends beyond clinical practice. Further, he has contributed significantly to academic literature with 10 publications featured in renowned journals worldwide, including the Indian Journal of Ophthalmology and being socially responsive. Furthermore, Dr. Alpesh's philanthropic and endeavors have illuminated his compassionate nature as he has conducted more than 8,000 plus cataract surgeries for underprivileged individuals, enabling them to restore their societal and economical roles with their communities. It is indeed an honor to have Dr. Alpesh with us today, sharing his expertise and ins insights into LASIK vision correction. Welcome, Doctor. We'll begin with the doctor's presentation, followed by a live question and answer session where you'll have the opportunity to ask questions. If you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to type them into the chat box and we'll have uh, address them during the question and answer session. Without further ado, let's welcome Dr. Alpesh to enlighten us on LASIK vision correction technology. So yes, doctor, the virtual floor is yours now. Thank you, Kavya, for the wonderful introduction. And uh, today's topic, I'm going to I welcome all the delegates who have come to forward to listen to this talk. It's a light beyond the glasses. <clears throat> LASIK for young and peers. Now, coming to the refractive surgery, this has changed the life of people who have glasses. Um, what is the refractive, what type of refractive errors, what are the type of refractive error surgeries and pre- and post-operative care, who are eligibility criteria and benefit of LASIK, we will be, be dealing with it today. Now, coming to the introduction, early morning, what people do is, you have to wake up early morning and see your glasses or contact lens. After that, you tend to brush your teeth. It makes this reality today with the, all the procedures available that you can go without glasses and contact lens methods for your procedures, for your daily activity. So this type of refractive errors, what are the eligibility and all that will be, and what are the benefits I'll be talking today. And what are the refractive errors? The commonish problem that everybody faces today is of a refractive error who have glasses, like the common vision problem where the light is not focused on the retina. So the patient vision is blurred without glasses and it is present in all the ages group. Therefore, it is very important that we address all these problems and with today's refractive error, we can do. So type of refractive errors is a myopia, what also known as nearsightedness. Distant objects appear blurry and the closed ones are clear. So patients do have like black board, get children who have this kind of error very commonly seen. So this is another error where we have a concave lens, convex lens, which corrects this kind of uh, refractive error. 
and the patient is spectacle de dependent on this one. Other type of refractive errors is hypometropia or hyporopia. There is farsightedness, which is very common, where the close objects are blurry, where the distance objects are very clear. So in that, we require a convex lens, which we give to the patient that are plus numbers, which are giving to the patient, and they are able to read, write, and all that. But uh, distance objects are more clear in that. But still, they are dependent on all the day to day activities like intermediate vision and all that is blurred without glasses. Now, we have another refractive error that is astigmatism, where the vision is distorted because of irregularity of cornea or lens shape. Here, what we see in the patient's view of this, the bridge is not that clear, whereas in this part, in normal vision, that is definitely is more clear. So that is called astigmatism, and the most common after the 40, everybody will have is distant presbyopia, which is age-related focusing of the close objects. So we tend to have a plus numbers post-operatively, and uh, even after age-wise, after the 40 years, they have the close vision, blur vision, especially people who don't able are not able to see after the age of 40. That is known as presbyopia. Now, what are the methods of getting this rid of your glasses by the refractive lens procedures? Uh, refractive procedures are kind of base, basis, basic to the advanced. Like we have a PRK, that is Porter Refractive Character Matrix, then uh, Trans PRK, LASIK, SMILE, ICL, and Refractive Lens section. Now, coming to the PRK and trans PRK, that is a photo refractive keratomyosis, is a laser based study where we reshape the cornea. Even though the cornea is little at the smaller size, we can definitely treat with the PRK procedure. So, along coming to the first, third, we are putting a numbing drops so the eye is anesthetized and no this. Then we put some kind of alcohol solution. So the melts the initial layer of the cornea and the procedure is being done. When the laser is applied, the laser is calculated according to the numbers of the patient and it is pre-filled to the after doing the procedure, we are just putting a contact in. The procedure as such will take around 20 minutes for both the eyes. Now coming to the video presentation of the PRK. Here first we are marking the second portion of the eye and the alcohol is being put. That is a typical PRK what we do. And the epithelium that is the cornea, the front layer has been removed by the mechanical. Then we are putting uh, machining the laser light so that we are removing. Doctor, uh, sorry for the interruption. Uh, can you just reduce the volume of the video? Okay. Yes, doctor. Um, so once we are doing after the removing of the numbers, we just put the contact lens that stays around around the, uh, around four or five week a week or so, and we can remove the contact lens with patient next day itself. He is able to see a clear vision, and that's a good option for the patient, especially for people who are don't want others to know that they have gone any refractive procedures. Next, we come to a basic other basic procedure that's a LASIK, becomes cost effective and economical to the patient. Here, a flap is raised by a microkeratome. After the raising the flap. Similarly, the laser applied to the bed of the cornea and the refractive error has been with this. Again, we are putting back the flap and reshaping the cornea back. So, the, we are reshaping the cornea in this case and the flap is kept behind. Yeah. Here is a video how we are going to do the laser. 
Now the flap is based by the femoral laser. Once that is done, and the hinge has been left behind, laser has been applied to the desired numbers to be corrected, and the flap is kept. So we are basically the raising the flap, and that is the mechanical thing which is happening. In such cases. It's of course a good method where the healing is fast, and definitely it is better for the patient for it. But it has own its side effects, and so we are now come to a more advanced technique that is a cone, which is kept on the eye, so that we are going to not cut the flap completely. We are just removing the center part of the lenticular, where it will remove and the eye shape reshape accordingly. So we have got what is known as smile technique, which is not present at Belgaum, but definitely we have in our unit in Agarwal Hospital at Bangalore. Here the lenticle has been reshaped. After the lenticle has been cut into the different, the again it is dissected, the cornea is dissected, and the small cut has been taken place in this case. And the lenticle, the center part of the cornea is being removed effectively, so that we can reshape the cornea. Basically, we are flattening the cornea. Now, this is what we are talking about: LASIK, PRK, and other procedures, uh, smile procedures. Now, we come to another procedure, which is very helpful for the patient. Where laser LASIK is not effective, it is not indicated in that patient because that's how the doctor decides which is the next procedure to be applied. So the ICL or implantable columnar lens. This is a very thin lens, like what people wear the contact lens. We are placing the contact lens in the eye itself, and that is very helpful for reducing the numbers and especially astigmatism. Now we have another procedure. What is the refractive lens exchange? Uh, what can be done here? A small probe is put inside the eye, and the normal cataract what we have has been removed, or crystalline clear lens has been removed, and the desired lens can be implanted inside the eye. The both the procedure, but this kind of procedure cannot be done. At a time in both eyes, it's done one eye. Definitely, then the eye object what is doing is focused on the retina, and you are going to see. Now, eligibility. What is the best part of the eligibility criteria is age. You usually, eighteen to twenty years is the important age, or the vision has to be stable after the eighteen to twenty year years of age. Where the vision is there, then of course the doctor dep the dependence is there. Few tests have been done beforehand. Then corneal thickness is, should be adequate. That a doctor decides which cornea is good for doing what kind of procedures. And overall health of the eye is very important for us, so that the problem does not repeat itself. Okay. Then we have another problem. What is a dry eye, which is commonly seen today in patients, where we have a dry eye, and that are not good for LASIK sometimes. But we can give some drops and definitely improve the dryness symptoms what they have, and can perform a laser breakthrough. Then we have other coexisting eye conditions like inflammation of eye, very dry eye. Or retinal pathology or glaucoma is a not a good candidate for doing a LASIK. Definitely, doctor will decide, and we do the preoperative test and come to the conclusion. Like if there is a red eye and all that, if there are previous infections of the eye or the cornea, we not a good candidate for doing the LASIK. The doctor definitely definitely decide. 
I had a patient few days back who had uh, been referred from uh, the, because the patient had some kind of inflammation and was referred to me for doing a laser removal of glasses. But seeing the patient, it has patient having a corneal problem will not be a good candidate for doing a laser. So we, I told the patient that can be a problem. But patient wanted some under correction of the vision, but not to the up to the mark. So that's why we did the correction. So eligibility and the patient expectation has to be taken into the consideration. Now, how does the how long does the LASIK take? It's relatively quick, like 20 minute procedure, day daycare procedure. Patient has to come morning, get admitted, and after that the procedure is been done. So and the patient after that is live and gone back to the room. Initially, there will be burning sensation, and in the both eyes. The post-operative recovery is good. The 24 hours to 48 hours is very important for the patient to get the recovery of vision. And it is less completed in less than 30, 20, 20, 30 minutes of the procedure. It's definitely beneficial for the patient. And patient can, after that, put a contact lens, after that also color contact lens, many of them. One of the patients just came to me, which has high numbers of minus 24, and never worn uh, sunglasses of shades of uh, different kind, what he wanted to wear. Because he wanted to roam around with the sunglasses showing off. But because of the procedure, he could not, because of the glasses, he was tempted to use the sunglasses, but was never to because of high numbers and relatively costly numbers. So we had got rid of his numbers of minus 24 also, and he was able to wear glasses and chains later on. So important is consultations of an evaluation of the patient, wearing contact lens, the history. So you can stop wearing contact lens, 12 to, if you are wearing a soft contact lens, has to be stopped at least 24 hours. If you are wearing a hard contact lens, has to be stopped. And preoperative evaluation is very important and it is important to rule out if there are possibilities of any other corneal pathologies we have to look at. Now we have to post operatively important is medication supplement that is usually given for one and a half months of treatment. Initially it is aggressive treatment is given after uh, maybe one and a half year month it can be tapered off or reduced. Other important part is avoid alcohol and smoking. And definitely we have a support system where you can call even post-operatively after the doing the treatment and we will definitely help you. We are adequately staff and we will address your problem definitely. Eye hygiene has to be maintained like you have to clean, the drops have been instilled regular at regular intervals and you have to wash the eye after procedure, after one week or 15 days, you can wash your eyes. You can as well as swim also, once your laser procedure is done. Any questions? Rest and recovery, what I would say is, after doing a LASIK, rest is required for one week, and after five days, you can use your own PC and WhatsApp and all that. Usually, protective wear is prescribed for a week or so. After that, you can forego that and you can wear normal. Use of prescribed drops, whatever you have. And for first one week, you just avoid strenuous exercise. After that, you can do all the activities. And for one week, you have to limit your screen time. But there could because excessive screen time and reading can lead to dryness of, and it can increase the period of drops to be more than two to three months or so. So in case if there is a redness, blur vision, what we have to report back to the doctor saying what if the post-operatively, usually the doctor prescribes drops and follow-up appointment. The follow-up appointments after the laser is 24 hours, one week after the procedure and one month and one week. 
six months afterwards, a regular follow up is required. Follow up appointment. What are advantages is benefits is visual recovery and convenience of the patient because patient just is the daycare procedure important and the, definitely it gives the freedom on the sunglasses. The recovery is very quick, say 24 hours after that and five days after that it's free to do all that. And definitely it's a cost effective procedure where it is economically also sound and it's a permanent procedure and in case if there are some numbers left behind it can be redone also and there are some criteria we can do and remove the glasses for near vision like after 40 definitely kind of treatment can be done known as press board can be removed the glasses but it has, has some limitations as such but today's technology is not for that but up to 45 to 48, we can easily cover without glasses and read, definitely. And this improves the self-esteem of the dog of patients because, because of the glasses, your self-esteem comes down, sometimes because of high numbers also. So you feel introvert personality is there. In that case, after removal of glasses, the outlook of the patient is changed. Definitely. And if your glasses are lost, your and uh, or broken in the in meantime, if you are going to a picnic, definitely it will be helpful for you, where you can, because of the uh, without the independence of glasses is there, you are able to see. Now clear vision and the overall vision field of vision, because the patients do have glasses. Only clear vision is to the glasses. So the field is restricted only to the glasses. But surrounding when you are able to see, after the doing the LASIK, uh, your field of vision also increases. So no fogging, no fludging of glasses has been seen because you tend to have touch your eyeglasses regularly. So you have to clean regularly. Regular. And the LASIK last, the results is long lasting, but definitely better of for the long term. And it gives a better life. Yeah, Kaviat, can you uh, any questions are there? You can take it. Yeah, yes, doctor. Uh, thank you so much, doctor, for the insightful presentation. Uh, now it's time for a question and answer session. Uh, so I could already see some questions from our audience. So for all your other queries, please write to care at dragarwal.com and we'll be happy to answer all your questions. So let's begin with the first one. Uh, the first question is, uh, so far patients above 50 with refractive errors, would you suggest a cataract operation over a LASIK or smile, etc.? And cost-wise, which one makes sense? Uh, above the age of 50, definitely there will be some amount of cataract. Depends on, the, and there is right now there are no procedures available above 50. Would a refractive lens would be a better option in such cases, and a cataract surgery in later on dates would be a better option. Yeah, second part of the question was. was second one is uh, like, one minute. And cost-wise, which one makes sense, LASIK or SMILE? Uh, LASIK uh, is most cost-effective, cost but at the age of, again, uh, age is the factor where we are going to consider because it's going to be only for seven, seven to ten years of the and develop, developing a cataract would be a better option. So refractive lens would be a better option. But okay. if you are consider cost, LASIK and the cost effect is better option if you take into consideration. Okay. So uh, the next question is, my daughter is 14 and she's having minus 10 power. I want to meet you, doctor. Yeah, definitely we'll look into it. And at the age of 14, when it's uh, over 10 years of age, 14 years of age and minus 10, definitely numbers get to it. As I have told in my presentation, where 
the age, by the age of 18 to 19 years, the number could be increasing. So once the number stabilizes, we can get rid of kind of number, whatever that numbers are. Okay. So the next question is, uh, can a boy aged eight years can be treated with surgery? Definitely no, because it's a growing age and the numbers keep on increasing up to the age of 50. Definitely it is not, but a regular checkup is required and so that the patient, whatever the vision is there, best corrected vision, we can give the glasses. Important is to vision with, because if the age of eight, uh, if you think over that, there could be a chance that there could be a problem of amlopia. It's a lazy eye where your vision cannot be corrected by any kind of surgery because it keeps on increasing over a period of time. But important is you have to get the correct glasses at that age. Okay. So there's one more question, doctor. Uh, is the procedure painful and uh, can I go to work immediately after the surgery? No, it is not that painful at the during the procedure because we are putting anesthetic drops. So it will take around 15 to 20. But I would suggest not to go to your job because of, because it's going to heal and you have to put drop more frequently. So not advisable to go for job at least for 24 to 48 hours. After that, you can definitely. So uh, is it a one-time procedure? No, it is definitely it's one-time procedure, but uh, depends on how it is healing. So if there are numbers that left behind, we can definitely do a top up and treat it if your your corneal thickness is adequate. Okay. So next question is: uh, If I do LASIK surgery, will it restrict me from doing any other eye surgeries in the future? No. Definitely not. We can do all the procedures like if you are any other procedure like. Today's technology, we don't have much after for age of 47, 48. But definitely in the future, we, beyond we cannot think about if the technology comes, we can definitely correct more numbers, even if for presbyopic classes are there. And any kind of cataract or retinal detachment or any other procedure can be done. Yes, definitely it can be. And non-ophthalmic surgery also can be done. Right. So, the next question is, uh, is the LASIK procedure 100% successful? Yes, uh, it is 100% provided. The profile and everything goes by the doctors. Definitely, preoperatively, will be telling you all the details. And that is the best for option. If there is a slight negative PT in your profile, definitely a doctor will tell no. For any kind of person. Yeah. So, uh, dear sir, if cataract is done, is it possible to remove glasses? Yes, cataract can be done, and that mm, if cataract is done and some kind of numbers are there, definitely we can remove kind of numbers uh, like astigmatism, and it can be done. Like PRK procedure can be done. Yes. Okay. So, which type of surgery is highly suggestible? For refractive errors? No, uh, see, uh, up to the age of uh, age also is a factor. Other thing what we consider is the numbers. So if we are around six to seven, our refractive uh, it, elastic would be a better option. But beyond seven, again, ICL or refractive lens section is the better option. Okay. So there's one more question. Uh, what is the procedure for ICL? ICL, once we have a procedure, we are taking, uh, because this ICL is customized to your eye, definitely. And once the customization and it is sent to the company, uh, this ICL is like a contact lens, it's a very thin lens. It's not normal contact lens. So uh, this kind of lens is exactly fitting in your eye and it is placed between the normal lens and the iris. And the fitment and all that is measured accordingly and definitely doctor has 
to take a decision whether that fits in your so it is between the normal lens and the iris the front part of the eye that is color of your eye what we said that is the way we fix this lens so very thin lens and a fragile lens it's like a contact lens but it is non removable only a doctor can remove it in the laboratory so yes uh, there's one more question already once i got laser treatment 14 years ago mm. now again i am suffering from myopia since 8 months can i get it again my age is now 51 51 uh, yeah. yeah you can get it reference on numbers and your corneal thickness what you have there we can treat it but uh, for your reading numbers it will keep on increasing because your age is 51 so at the age you will be putting a Around a plus two numbers is definite for you. That cannot be removed because at the age of fifty-five, it is going to increase further. So it may be around two point five. That cannot. But if you have a minus numbers, definitely can be treated. Okay. So the next question is: uh, If my spherical and cylindrical power is still increasing gradually, uh, should I still go ahead with refractive surgery? See, uh, if you uh, see there, there it tends to be see, the treatment is on that particular time and day. If it increases beyond that, definitely the the important is stability. What is it? If there is a stable number, then it can be treated and definitely you can go ahead with laser. But if it is increasing, you have to take a call whether you are going to do the numbers today. Or you want to go and make it. It depends on the patient. Doctor suggests I can remove the numbers at present, whatever you have. Okay. Uh, my age is thirty. Can LASIK correct my specific vision issues? Considering my age, are there uh, any other alternative procedures or treatments that might be more suitable for me? At the age at the age of thirty, definitely LASIK is the better option. Provided your numbers are stable, no other co pathologies or co morbidity conditions are there, and um, that's where you have to be assessed by a, a specialist who can judge and tell you whether the procedure is good for you. Definitely, at the age of thirty, you can go ahead with any kind of procedure. So, what post-operative care and uh, follow-up appointments will be necessary for LASIK? Post-operative, as I told you, it is twenty-four hours after the laser LASIK. Then usually we see after one week, and then one month, and then six months. And uh, drops has to be instilled initially for a week. More frequently, like six times a day. Then we reduce. Depends on the condition. We reduce it to four times, five, four times a day, and after one month, you can one and a half month, you can stop it. Okay. So the next question is: uh, Can I have both eyes treated at the same time? Yes, LASIK can be treated in both eyes to be treated on the same day, doctor. Yes, same day. Okay. The refractive elimination or ICL has to be done on different day. Okay. Or three days gap at least we have to check. Great. So the next question is: How good these kind of surgeries hold if anyone has uh, retinal degeneration? Retinal degeneration is a totally different pathology. What we do is assess the operative and told to the patient that we are a coexisting retinal pathology. And uh, definitely, retinal pathology has to be treated separately in a different. The nerve and a specialist, Doctor Sachin is there with us, who can treat it definitely with the retinal pathology. Once the retinal, if there is a point where a retinal pathology cannot be corrected, the refractive lens exchange would not or refractive would not be a good option for you. You have to recognize that because your retina is the main thing. It lies like a camera, and it focuses just gives us images, and the retinal images. Is the one which captures the image and processes in your brain. So, if the retina is damaged, 
definitely a LASIK or refractive lens stick is not a good option in the such case. So the next question is, I'm 72. Uh, can I get the treatment like uh, SMILE or LASIK? 72, uh, uh, Michael, this is, this, I want to know whether you have got a cataract or not. Okay. If a cataract surgery is done and if there are kind, some kind of numbers, definitely you can treat to a LASIK or a uh, SMILE procedure. But okay. if you are a cataract, having a cataract or uh, refractive lens system, definitely would be a good choice to do. So, yeah. Are people with astigmatism and myopia eligible for SMILE surgery? Uh, yeah, astigmatism and myopia depends on myopia up to four, four or five would be a good surgeon. Good option. Astigmatism up to two to three would be a good option. If beyond that would be other procedures are there, we can correct that. Okay. So if treat with, treated with myopia at a later stage, uh, if he is with myopia, then what to do? I think uh, the question is not right. Uh, if if I'm treated with myopia uh -huh. and at later stage, uh, if it is hypermetropia, then what to do? We can reverse it also. There is a condition provided there are there is no ectasia. That's why we have to judge. Important is preoperative evaluation is very important. It should not work correct also sometimes. Patients do have poor correction sometimes. So it is important the specialist looks after that and that is very important to judge whether it is good for them. Okay. So I think uh, this is the last question, doctor. Yeah. Uh, my age is 26 years. I am male and I have uh, minus 2.5 power in both eyes. Which surgery is suitable for me? LASIK could be definitely a suitable option. Now, PRK would be a suitable option. MILE also could be a good or suitable option. Depends each cost differently. So, what is the best? We'll be able to tell you on your corneal thickness as, and the age as you go is 26. Definitely a good option. Okay. So, yes, doctor, we have come to the end of the session. Uh, thank you so much for uh, your answers. So, for any further questions, please write us uh, write out to us at patientcare at dragarwal.com. Now, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Alpesh, for your insightful presentation and for uh, sharing your expertise with us today. And for the engaging audience, thank you so much for being a part of this webinar. And I hope you have loved, you and your loved ones are empowered to live a life free of glasses. So, stay safe, stay informed, and stay connected with us on our website and social media channels for more interesting information and tips to, to live a life of quality and clarity. Thank you once again. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.